people here doing something a little different than what I normally do. As a, what many would call hyperactive human being, I tend to have a lot of different interests. My dad would have called it a jack of all trades and master of none. <laughs> I like a lot of things. I've always been interested in science. One of the reasons why I'm interested in mechanical things, I love science. I love the things that make up this interesting world that we live in. And here, not too far from where I live, there are many different genuses of flora and fauna, including this goose that's walking across the road. Hello, goose. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> he was like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm in the way, I will move now. Oh. A couple of things, and these are both somewhat native to the area. We've got a lot of tiger lilies. They grow seemingly wild. Now, these folks have kind of left them in the edge of their lawn, but there's uh, mulberry, which grows everywhere around here. Um, that's a goldenrod. It hasn't really flowered yet. The tiger lilies are kind of gone past, but they're everywhere. And this is what I was really hoping to find. I'm not sure what this flower is. I'll look it up, find the uh, species of it. But it's a wild flower on the side. And you can see this other weed. I don't know what they're called. But this flower here is a chicory. They grow everywhere along the road in Lancaster County. And they're beautiful. Usually blue, sometimes white. And of course, there's the ubiquitous what I wanted. Everything right in one place here. close enough to the edge of the road to get a good video of. But you can see them there. It's great. And there's butterflies all over the place. As I said, lots of varied fauna along with the flora. I think this, those are simple cabbage butterflies. They are just loving the clover and the chicory, mostly the clover in this field. At night, these fields in early July, late June, early July, are alight with fireflies. But you can see all the butterflies. I hope they pick up well in the camera here. I'm going to try to take some video with the iPhone as well. But there are butterflies. Types yellow cabbage butterflies. I saw what looked like a monarch. Just wonderful. And so peaceful. One very humorous thing here is that I'm sitting taking pictures of the flora and fauna 
people are giving me a very wide berth. It's Lancaster, rural Lancaster on the road back here. You never know what you're going to get. Some people won't give you any berth at all. And some people will give you plenty. Sometimes all you need to see the beautiful things in nature is a little bit of stillness. One of the reasons I enjoy riding motorbikes so much is that it does seem to connect me more to the things of nature, the things around. When you're in a car, especially in the summertime, when it's very hot out, you're more likely to close all the windows and turn on the air conditioning. When you're on two wheels, you can't close all the windows and turn on the air conditioning from the very fact that there is no air conditioning and there are no windows. <laughs> to my understanding, from early in the times when this was first being settled, the settlers would use chicory root as a substitute for coffee. I don't think there are any substitutes for coffee, but whatever. The Lancaster County is also crisscrossed by these little streams and creeks. I don't know what the name of this one is. The sign over there probably says it. And I probably passed the, Now I passed the signpost, somebody knocked the sign down. <laughs> but these creeks will often have various kinds of life. I can see some butterflies over there, various flowers growing by the, the side, and then just that beautiful babbling bit of rapids down there. Not much in the way of fish in these things, but that's not what they're there for. I'm sure there's like crayfish and other small denizens like uh, stoneflies and such. There's a bird down there floating around. A lot of people will have their own plants that they put in. And some of those plants will actually end up growing wild eventually and become an invasive species. When you plant stuff, you have to be careful not to plant something that will become invasive, simply because it can push out the actual native species. Now this is the Little Conestoga Creek. It's a little trout stream. A lot of people fish this in the spring. They stock it with rainbow trout every year. If you go right up there in that little corner there and don't get kicked out by the landowner, that there is a nice little pocket where they like to sit. I don't fish this brook anymore, so I really don't care that I'm telling you that. But in the spring, they will stock this area. They're putting in a old, older folks community over here. Okay, and this is what I was talking about with the hibiscus. They're everywhere. They grow along the sides and there's some mulberry mixed in. They'll grow along the sides of the roads. And they're pretty much not native as far as I know. And there are two varieties that I've seen the most of are this white with the red internal part there, the red circle inside, and then the, the pink. Um, sometimes the darker purple too from what I've seen. I'm not sure if they were original to the area or if they're invasive, but there's a lot of them around. You'll find them just growing next to fields. This is just out the back of somebody's yard, but uh, these same plants will be found pretty much anywhere. And some people will choose to cultivate them like I have in my own backyard. Now you could not see it because of my camera, but there was a deer down the fence line on the other side, inside the quarry. One thing I was hoping to see a lot more of was Queen Anne's lace. There's some. Not a good place to stop, though. This is a uh, waterfowl sanctuary that was built to kind of offset the problems posed by that monstrosity. The Manheim Auto Auction is right there. Uh, this is a waterfowl sanctuary. There's cattails, various birds. To be Fair, I know they mean well, but I've never seen a duck or a goose in any of these ponds. Just a lot of pond muck. Oh, there is some milkweed. There's some of those lilies growing just wild. Looks like the flowers have gone past. Another empty pond. Wild sorghum looks like. Now there are some wildflowers that I'm not seeing a lot of. Wild rice maybe? not seeing a lot of them because they're past. Wild mustard is more of a spring thing. That's the Little Chickies Creek. I once saw a turtle in the middle of the road at one of these bridges. Put it back in the water. It was nice. Turtle didn't seem to care one way or another. I was glad he wasn't squashed. Found native grasses. 
naturalizing brown-eyed Susans <laughs> that have just taken over and some cone flowers in there. This is a brown-eyed Susan, black-eyed Susan, depending on who you talk to, other variety. They're similar to the cone flower in many ways. Um, I see some cone flowers out there. some of the brush and wildflowers are these naturalized flowers and there's some orange cone flowers here and some other some 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 purple here that's kind of gone gone past wow. this is all right next to one of my favorite things about Lancaster. went over. You can't really see it, but I'm riding next to it right now. It goes right alongside the road here. And of course a non-native species, <laughs> corn. Lots and lots of corn. And tobacco. It's amazing to me how the human mind adapts things for his use. What we know of as corn today, or maize in other countries, isn't what it originally started out as. It was cultivated by the First Nations peoples that were here. They showed this crop to the settlers, and the settlers learned how to farm it, and it became a staple food for this continent. So there you go. That the unique ability for the, the human creature and to adapt his surroundings for survival. Incredible. If you think about it, we're probably born the weakest of any creature on Earth, next to maybe a chick. Most birds are born, I can't think of a bird that isn't born flightless, especially the flightless birds, uh -huh, and has to grow into its pin feathers and then be able to fly. Yet we somehow adapt to the world around us, suit us, and to feed us, and to clothe us. Amazing thing. There's another one of those hibiscuses. So it's been an interesting walk through botany and uh, science. I love science, I get a kick out of it. Biology in particular, anything biological is really cool to me. I, I find the, the whole study of life science in particular to be astounding. So I appreciate those of you who are watching. You be safe, be well, and be blessed. Scoot and fool out. <laughs>